I think it would be nice to hear a Palestinian leader from Jordan hear what his perspective is. What, what was the last time we had an opportunity to have someone like this come and share for people all over the world who are either supportive or non-supportive of Israel and see what do they think? Has anybody stopped to ask what the people on the ground think and not these terrorist organizations? Not these terrorist leaders like Yasser Arafat and, and, and Balguti and all these nice guys? Yeah, what do the common Palestinians think? The ones who are actually working in the factories That's right. that the settlers built in this occupied territory. That's right. Well, um, I have my friend here. His name's Mudar Zaran. And he is actually living in exile. We can call him here on Skype. We'll see if he answers. He's living in exile in London because the king of Jordan has issued an arrest warrant against him and his family. So, Mr. Mudar Zaran, um, if the viewers can see you, I just would like to ask your opinion as a Palestinian who is, if we're understanding correctly, you're living in exile in England right now. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct, sir. And why is that? Well, because of my opposition against to be king of Jordan. We obviously have differences on uh, democracy, human rights, um, the details of the peace agreements with Israel. Well, can you explain, can you explain who you are and why you have a disagreement? Well, I am a Jordanian Palestinian political activist and I am also a writer I've been described, been given many names. Some called me the leader of the Palestinians of Jordan. But above all, I am a Palestinian Jordanian who seeks democracy and peace for his, for his country, Jordan. Now, now, are the, you Christian or Muslim? Because that's kind of am, important for our viewers as well. I am an Orthodox practicing Muslim. Okay. So, so we met, we met a, a few years back um, for our viewers. Mudar and myself, we met in a... Um, political uh, um, meeting, it doesn't matter, but the point is we met and we've come to uh, know each other in the past uh, few years here. And I'd like him to share what, what your opinion is concerning the land of Israel, uh, Jordan, and the boycott movement against Israel, and how does all that, you know, play into your opinion as a Palestinian? Well, um, most people in the West, unfortunately, do not understand the history of the problem. The main media and the West does portray a certain um, line that's not necessarily correct. There was a country, a piece of land called the, the British Mandate for Palestine, to give the viewers some history. There were Jews there prosecuted, and there were Arabs who were also prosecuted by, by the occupying Ottoman Empire. Then <clears throat> the British occupied the country and called it the British Mandate for Palestine. And then when the Britons were about to leave, there was the agreement that the Arab dwellers of the land, my people, would take 77% of the land because they, they were much, much higher in numbers and the Jews would take 23%. That 23% was renamed Israel, and the 77% was renamed uh, Jordan or Eastern Palestine. And uh, today, the problem is the West, the world, for some reason, seems fixed on, on the concept that we, the Palestinians or the Arabs, should take uh, a more of the chunk that the Jews managed to have, which is much smaller than our chunk. In my opinion, we both have a legitimate right to the land. We cannot deny, the Jews cannot deny our, 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 our heritage and our existence of the land. At the meantime, well, there's no common sense in us denying that Jews have been there for thousands of years. There's no point for of us to deny to the Jewish right of existence and Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. And the same way uh, with Saudi Arabia and Jordan and Egypt are Muslim states. 
while nobody is questioning, for example, Jordan is my country's Muslim nature, why should we be questioning Israel's Jewish, na in, 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 Jewish nature and ethnicity? And I think we both have had our shares. Our share of the land was like three times of that of the Jews, actually a little bit more. And uh, therefore, we, with any further attempts to make peace plans out of this context, where we got 77 percent, two states separated by the River Jordan, any further uh, peace attempts, like the one President Obama and Secretary Kerry are doing right now, is just going to bring more trouble and more, 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 more distrust and more, more, more pain for both of us, and it's going to lead us towards an unfortunate war that actually with today's world's event might be leading to what I can believe could be World War III in the foreseen future. So then you don't agree with the world powers it be, if it's the United States or the, or the, or the European Union or the United Nations, considering that, that Israel needs to give up more land and by the way, the, the land that you just mentioned earlier that, that, that is Jordan, is that not enough? Because some people might wonder, well, maybe it's not enough for the Palestinians living in Gaza and living in Judea and Samaria. Um, so can you explain well, that? Jordan is vast. Jordan is vast in area. Jordan has habilitated most of the Palestinians in the world live in Jordan, which is particularly, and again, Eastern Palestine. The late King Hussein said the truth is Jordan is Palestine and Palestine is Jordan. It's something that King Hussein, the late King Hussein, someone I respect very much, despite the differences, uh, has agreed to. Uh, so we already have our country. Well, do, you, do, you, do you believe that Israel is an apartheid nation like is being spoken on right now? There's actually a, a, events happening worldwide right now declaring that Israel is an apartheid uh, is nation. Um, as, what, as, what, do, as, what do you think about that? As a conservative Palestinian, I'm afraid that's absolutely not true, that's absolutely unfair, and that's demonizing of a sovereign democratic nation. Do I agree with Wait, everything? Is who's a sovereign democratic nation? Israel. Israel. Israel is the only country right. that has been treated as the Palestinians as human beings. Israel is the only country that allows us to get medical treatment for cancer for free. Israel is the only country that allows us to work in the farms, settlements, and factories. Do I agree with everything Israel does? Absolutely not. Nonetheless, I can tell you that those who hypocrites who are claiming Israel is an apartheid state should go and check the Palestinians in Lebanon where they live in, 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 in appetite concentration camps. They cannot get out after 8 o'clock. They're not entitled to 72 jobs they're not allowed to do. They're not allowed health care. They should see the Palestinians in Egypt. They should see the Palestinians in Jordan. They should see the Palestinians in Syria who are now being wholesale slaughtered with the media being silent. So it's, if it's not collective ignorance calling Israel an apartheid state, then it's probably only one explanation there is for that is anti-Semitism. Well, you know what, Mudal? What you just said right there, I think, was one of the most politically incorrect statements from a Palestinian coming from Jordan. And originally, when I remember correctly, when we talked, your family actually originally, pre-67, you guys were from uh, Shechem. Isn't that correct? No, we were, we, we were from Jerusalem. We barely Jerusalem. were from my, my grandparents were from Beth Shemesh today from uh, a town called Zora, mentioned in the Bible. Now they That's have right. the Zora community in there. They, they ran away in 1948 when, uh, during the Israel independence war because the Arab media was telling them that the Israelis were slaughtering people like sheep, which is not true because the people who stayed, none of them got hurt. And then we, in 1967, the Arab media were, was also speaking about uh, Israeli slaughtering people in the streets and raping women. And they ran away to their country, Jordan. So I am the son of a refugee. And no, what I said is not politically incorrect. It's absolutely what most Palestinians say in private 
It's absolutely there is there has been a change. Well, who are they afraid of then? If if that's what the they Palestinians are, believe in look private. At, look, look at me for example. I am one Palestinian who had the education, the family heritage, or the family status, the money. Okay, formerly the money, not anymore. The money <laughs> and the support, political heritage. Okay, to say what slightly to an extent what what's true, and look what I have. I have a life sentence in hard labor waiting for me in Jordan just because I said the truth. Just because I said the truth. And my indictment read one of the pieces of the indictment he wrote for Israeli newspapers. Whoa, boo hoo, a crime. I wrote for Israeli newspapers. <laughs> Most Palestinians, if this Mudar, who has all the education, the money, and the support, ended up in this horrific trouble just for saying the truth, what would happen to the average person? The unemployed Palestinian in Amman, or the or the, the falafel uh, shopkeeper in in Beirut, or any of those places where the Palestinians are oppressed and treated like nothing. That's so a great. That's I, a great point. So basically, you you have a platform to say what you want to say, whereas the normal uh, Palestinian, uh, uh, um, you know, your normal civilian who works farm or or has a small private business. Uh, he would just be basically overrun by 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 who though, who who would who would Absolutely. who would come against him? Absolutely. I mean, don't you have a democracy? I thought Israel was the was the one that's an apartheid state, and that Israel is the one that is taking all your rights and what have you. That's what they well, say on the media. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you this much. Uh, honestly, if uh, Israel is an apartheid state that gives us jobs, health care education, even terror prisoners in Israeli jails are allowed to go to Israeli universities. If Israel is such an, is such an apartheid state that gives us all of that, then probably apartheid is a good thing and Israel should expand its apartheid to the rest of the world. Really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know Mudal, that that's great. Um, it's funny that you mentioned that, that Palestinians can get an education because if I remember correctly, Balguti, one of the founders of the BDS movement, is himself a Palestinian with an Israeli education from the University of Tel Aviv. Is that correct? Let me tell you something. You need to understand that the terrain has changed, the nature, the environment of the area has changed. We, unfortunately, the Israeli and the Zionist establishment in the United States be it evangel evangelist, Christian Zionist, you name it, they are dealing with today's world with the same rules of 50 years ago. The Palestinians, after the uh, death of Yasser Arafat, after Hamas took over Gaza and killed 2,400 Palestinians in a few weeks, after that happened, the Palestinians have had a change of heart. No, they don't love Israel now. My people, we don't love Israel. But we've realized who the true enemy is, and we've come back to our senses. For example, we were dreaming that all we need is just for those bloody Israelis, excuse my language, to leave Judea and Samaria and the West Bank, and then iPhones are going to grow in trees and everything's going to be magic. They, they left, and now we miss them. Now we wish they could go back, they could come back. And I was in Judea and Samaria, just in uh, Bethlehem and Ramallah and uh, Jerusalem, Eastern Jerusalem. I, I run all of those places with one question last summer. What would you rather for the PA to come over or not? And, and again, there was a poll of 77% of Palestinians in Jerusalem would rather for Israel to stay. So we've come back to our senses. We fought the fight, and then we found out that we fought him for fighting for nothing. It doesn't mean that we love Israel by any chance. Nonetheless, we've come back to our senses. Now you speak about education. I'm not sure why you are so concerned with people like Barghouti and others. If you haven't noticed, the most radical people who want to topple Israel and end Israel and throw, feed the Jews to the fish, all of those people usually enjoy the privileges of Israel, like Ahmad Tipi, the parliament member in Israeli Knesset, who is lobbying hard against Israel. Wait, did you if, just say that there's an Arab in the Israeli Knesset? Listen to me. There's 14 Arabs. In the, the Arabs in Israel are the minority. They, they are barely 20%. They get up to more than 15% or up to 70% of the Israeli Knesset. Now, the Palestinians in Jordan, we are 88%, and we have only, only exactly... 9% of the wow. Jordanian parliament. And we have no parliamentarians in Lebanon, no parliamentarians whatsoever in Syria, 
and not even basic human rights in any of the Arab countries, except I have to be honest, one country, Saudi Arabia, allows the Palestinians to work and remain just like a green card. And again, that's, I have to praise them for that. Because well, that's nice of them. What, how how kind. much better than the rest of the Arab, Arab countries. So those people like, now let's, let's put it in a, another way. Would, would I be, rather be a free man in Lebanon or in Jordan or a prisoner in Israel? I absolutely would choose President Israel because I would get free health care as a Palestinian. I would get free education. Someone I got, I came to know very closely through uh, the internet and social media is Sultan Al Ajlani. The man uh, committed a terrorist act. He's a Jordanian, Jordanian, not Palestinian. But again, they're all my brothers. I don't make a difference. They're all my people. Yep. Sultan Al Ajlani was a young man who killed a few Israeli soldiers, I think, on the borders back, uh, some 18 years ago. And he was freed in a peace deal. This young man who killed Israeli soldiers in Israel on the borders and served his, some of his sentence in Israel managed to get a bachelor's degree, I think, in law through the Hebrew University in jail. So uh, honestly, honestly, it, it, it recently, just a young, very talented Palestinian Jordanian girl who never got a chance, a chance of an education in Jordan who is a Jordanian citizen, managed to get herself a scholarship to Technion. Technion is Israel's MIT or Israel's Harvard or Stanford That's for right. free. And I can give you another example. You know what? That's that's I, a I, staggering, I, 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 Those I, 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 are staggering I, I, facts that you're giving. Those are really I, I staggering, and I think an most of our viewers at this point are probably thinking I that I paid you, you a lot of money for this. I, you don't give me a lot of money. My family was very a very rich family. There's, there's a, 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 an entire neighborhood, and it, the most exclusive street in Amman, and you can check it on Google Earth, is called Zahran Street. We used to be an aristocratic family until I started my opposition, and then I lost everything. Unlike many other names who speak for Israel, those names made money and gained money and status by speaking for Israel. In my case, I've lost basically everything. I cannot even see my mother, who's a very old woman, you know, I, who knows if I'm going to see her ever again. So I'm paying for my stances, and I'm willing to do so. And honestly, I've been told this might cost me my life. I've been given clear threats, but I'm not trying to make myself look like a hero. We Palestinians have given a lot of souls for the wrong cause, fighting the wrong enemy. If my soul goes down for it, then at least there's one Palestinian soul for the right cause. Now, let me tell you a personal story, which I want the American audience to hear. It's a personal story. My cousin, okay, uh, 32 years ago, was 12-year-old. He threw a cocktail bomb on an Israeli bus. It, there, was, there were Israeli settlers in it, and it blinded one settler in one eye. He did his sentence as a juvenile, I think got out after three years, because he was 12. And today, his mother, my aunt, has diabetes and problems with her eyes, and guess who's treating her? Hadassah Hospital by Israeli doctors. We have been fighting the wrong enemy. We have been launching our weapons to the wrong enemy. Ali the Yasser Arafat, I have to respect him because he's only the only leader we've ever had as of now. And, and until until recently, he's the only leader we ever had. But he was simply writing, fighting the wrong enemy. If he only focused on the truthful enemy, we would have not been through this mess. So now, that, what so that enemy, you, you, just to make clear here, that enemy that you're talking about, the true enemy, is not Israel. Absolutely not Israel, no. Yeah. Not Israel. It's like we've had a, a relationship between us and Israel. And who, very... Then who is Mudaw? Who, who, who is it that really is, 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 is the, the, the core enemy of, of really core bringing enemy. peace to the Middle East and making core sure that the Palestinians have a... A, a, a nation of their own in Jordan and not an apartheid state like they have right now, if I'm, if I'm able, if I'm allowed to use that term, I think that would be a more correct place to use that term for, if I'm understanding correctly. Well, so then who is the enemy? Well, Jordanian apartheid of the Palestinians is much more advanced than South African apartheid, and I have evidence for it. And amazingly, I've sent all the evidence to Human Rights Watch, and they simply dismissed it. They told me we can't prove it, even though it's proven. All they have to do is just to verify it. But Senator, the UN uh, observers, which obviously they haven't done and will not do, 
like they've done in, 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 in Syria, and they just go, they observe, and, then, and observe the butchering of, of, of innocent uh, uh, men and women and children. But, you know, apparently they can go over there hypocritically, but they won't come to Jordan. They absolutely will come to Jordan. They won't even go to the Yarmo camp, camp where MiG-29s are, are bombing Palestinian children and burying them alive. But uh, again, it's uh, anti-Semitism. I mean, the media has a culture of hated Jews, and that culture built into ignorance now. So the mainstream is to say Israel's appetite. If you come and say uh, Jordan's appetite, or even, even, even Sudan or Somalia is appetite, it doesn't even add up. So it's the main, main street uh, uh, bleed culture. But you ask me who the enemy is, the enemy is clear. It's Arab dictatorship. Arabs have always directed us towards fighting Jews and hating Jews and directed their people towards fighting Jews. I mean, again, I am not necessarily, I am very cautious about change in Jordan. And I realize that to, to a great extent, the King of Jordan might be the best wrong answer we have at the moment, unless something changes. Nonetheless, because he has political problems at home, he canceled the peace agreement with Israel just eight days ago. And today, he launched, for the last three days, the, his media has been whipping Israel as an apartheid terrorist state and calling for, for jihad in Israel uh, and his parliament members. And they are all people under the government or the Jordanian regime's control. They have been demonizing Israel like crazy, all because we have problem at home and it's easier to make blame it on the Jews. And this is what all Arab dictators have been doing. The king of Jordan... If I'm, if I'm to give him one advice, you know, we used to be absolute enemies. At the moment, I am again cautious about change in Jordan. I, 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 I'm not sure where it's going to lead, but I can tell you that he is actually uh, barking the wrong tree here, and so did all Arab dictators. Right. Yeah, so you would, so you would agree with, with if, we if we study history, and this is part of what I try to tell my viewers, is that we need to learn from history that any time... Um, the nations try to uh, attack Israel, then time and time again, those nations have come and they are gone and they are no more. But the people of Israel are still here. The land of Israel is still here and they're, and they're here to remain. And uh, just recently we can learn that from uh, Egypt who uh, spoke evil against Israel and, and, and now they're in turmoil. And so is Lebanon and so is Syria and so is now uh, unfortunately, we see also Jordan is, is on the brink of, 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 you know, like you said, the, ha the Hashemite leader losing his power. And that's simply because of making and repeating the same mistake uh, and not learning from his uh, predecessors who came before him and I, other Arab I, leaders. Again, I, I can tell you about, I mean, the Quran as an Orthodox Muslim. I am not an particularly an Islamist or an Islamic scholar. But the Quran was very clear about what would happen to Jews by the end of time. That, uh, should the time of the end of days come, we will drown you all up and bring you back to the Holy Land. This is in the Quran. So, from whether you believe that we're going to butcher the Jews after that, whether you want it or not as a Muslim, you have to agree that they're going to prosper to the point where all of them. They're going to leave New York and uh, Dallas, Texas, and uh, they're going to take that El Al uh, or Delta air, airplane to Tel Aviv and then Jerusalem. It's going to happen. All of them, according to our belief, if you don't believe in it, you don't believe in the Quran, then you're not a Muslim. All of them are going co coming back to the Holy Land, and obviously they're not going to come back if, if you are to conquer them. At the moment, set aside religious uh, dogma, we need to understand that I'm not sure why would I be friends with Bashar al-Assad or Lebanon or Syria or any of those countries uh, versus being uh, friends with the all or being an enemy to the only uh, democracy and technology in a uh, thriving country in the Middle East. Israel has become an oasis of democracy, human rights. Israel makes mistakes with the Palestinians, for example, at the Mahsoums or the, the, the separation points and, and, and the the borders. Checkpoints. Okay. okay, nonetheless, Israel is, I mean, Israel on a bad day is much, much better than most countries of the world on a good day. 
Well, well Mudal, I really, really appreciate your views on this. Um, and, and just for the viewers to be able to hear from a Palestinian, because I tell people that I uh, get my views from, you know, Palestinians. And they might think, well, he's, he's out of his mind. He's a Jewish man. What does he know what he's talking about? And I just really want to thank you for being able to tell our viewers from your perspective. Well, let me just, the, uh, the time is limited, I understand, yes. but I have to add something. That with all due respect to President Obama, I am, I am a yellow dog Democrat uh, growing up at one point in my life in New Hampshire. I mean, I am a Democrat, but I have to warn President Obama that whatever he's doing now with this peace plan, in my opinion, without looking at any religious dogma, it's going to bring more terror, and it's going to be exportable terror that's going to hit back at the United States. This peace plan is the seed of a major terror that's going to launch into Europe and the United States. It's a bad idea. I genuinely hope President Obama would eventually understand that and stop listening to Arab governments. By the way, the idea came from Arab governments. They suggested it to Obama. So I hope, I hope he, would, he, would, he would reconsider this very dangerous Congress. Well, thank you, Mudal. It's been uh, really great to hear from you, and I'm glad to hear that you're actually still alive and still able to speak out your opinion, which is very valuable uh, in this day and age. So thank you, Mudal. May, may Hashem bless you, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and really protect you in your, in your endeavor to uh, build a, a nation for your people in Jordan. And may, may uh, God will that he will do that for you and speedily. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Bless you. If you enjoyed this clip, please feel free to check out the full version in the link located in the description panel below. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can also connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. As always, help yourself to the diverse array of teachings located on this YouTube channel or on our website at glc.us.com.